This is the Future of Automotive with Steve Greenfield. Welcome back to the latest episode of the Future of Automotive on CBT News, where we put recent automotive and mobility news into the context of the broader themes impacting the industry. I'm Steve Greenfield from Automotive Ventures, and I'm glad that you could join us this week. A Wall Street Journal article this week reported on why battery-powered vehicles face longer wait times and bigger repair bills than gasoline engine vehicles after a crash. For EVs, repairs following a collision can cost thousands of dollars more than their gas-powered counterparts because the fixes tend to require more replacement parts, the vehicles are more complicated, and fewer skilled technicians exist to do such repairs. While these issues may ease over time, first-time electric owners may be startled by the higher cost and longer wait times. Last year, repairing an EV after a crash cost an average $6,587, compared with $4,215 for all vehicles, according to CCC Intelligence Solutions. The increased costs following collisions contrast with the maintenance savings that dealers and automakers promote when trying to get buyers to switch to electric cars and trucks. In addition to not needing gas, EVs tend to require less maintenance. Not needing to do regular service items like oil changes, engine tune-ups, or replacement of timing belts means that electric vehicle owners spend half as much maintaining their vehicles as their gasoline-owning counterparts, according to Consumer Reports. But when EVs need repair, it can be costly. Rental car company Hertz, which operates a large electric fleet mostly composed of Tesla vehicles, said its third quarter profit was negatively impacted in part because of the cost of repairing electric models. High repair costs are also helping to drive up insurance premiums for electric EV owners who pay on average $357 a month for coverage compared with $248 for gas vehicle owners, according to insurance comparison website Insurify. Last year, on average, an EV repair required roughly double the replacement parts compared with a conventional vehicle, according to CCC. The way many electric models' parts are bolted or welded into the vehicles often means that components cannot be repaired and have to be replaced. When these vehicles do get into a crash, repairs can be more complex for many reasons. The bodies can be more complicated to disassemble, and the repairs tend to require more steps and precautions. Vehicles containing lithium-ion batteries also require special storage considerations because of the risk of fire when they are damaged. Those precautions add both time and cost to the repair process. The vehicle bodies themselves can result in higher parts and labor costs because EVs tend to use more exotic materials than traditional steel. Some of these materials, like aluminum, require specialized tools and storage facilities, narrowing the number of shops that can perform the work. Repairing an electric car tends to take longer as well, in part because there are still only a number, a limited number of shops capable of doing this type of work. It takes 25% longer to get an EV into a body shop than a traditional vehicle, according to data from CCC. Those repairs tend to take roughly 57 days on average compared to 45 days for non-EVs. With EV inventories backing up on dealership lots uh, more than ICE vehicles, it's going to be more challenging to sell them if consumers end up paying higher insurance premiums and are worried about the increased cost of repair if they do end up getting into an accident. So with that, let's transition to our companies to watch. Every week, we highlight interesting companies in the automotive technology space to keep an eye on. If you read my weekly Intel report, which is delivered to your email inbox at 7 a.m. on Mondays, I showcase a company or two to watch, and we take the opportunity here on this segment to share those companies with you. Today, our new company to watch is called Viso. Viso provides autonomous IoT monitoring for railways that has developed vibration energy harvesting technology by which sensors and other Internet of Things elements can be powered without batteries. They allow railways to efficiently monitor both wheel bearing and wheel health. 
The company's Power Rail product is a reliable and cost-effective solution for rail car owners. It prioritizes safety and aims to reduce maintenance costs, prevent derailments, and maximize wagon availability. The company's second product, called PowerTrack, provides real-time vibration and GPS data that lets you see the exact areas in the infrastructure that needs to be checked or fixed. If you'd like to learn more about Vizo, you can check out their website at www.vizo.lt. So that's it for this week's Future of Automotive segment. If you're an auto tech entrepreneur working on a solution that helps car dealerships, we want to hear from you. We are actively investing out of our new dealer fund. If you're interested in joining our investment club to make direct investments into auto tech and mobility startups, please join. There is no obligation to start seeing our deal flow, and we continue to have attractive investment deals available to our members. Don't forget to check out my book, The Future of Automotive Retail, available on Amazon.com, and keep an eye out for my new book, The Future of Mobility, which will be out around the end of the year. Thanks as always for your ongoing support, and we look forward to working closely together with you to create the future of this industry. Thanks for tuning in to CBT News for this week's Future of Automotive segment, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching The Future of Automotive with Steve Greenfield. 